talking again so now today we will be discussing further to our page 144 usml step 1 2021 microbiology where we have discussed previously about the salmonella sigella salmonella and other salmonella species as well as sigella as well so now moving forward we will move to the our uh, same page we are on the 144 of usml uh, that is uh, step one now we will be talk we'll be discussing about this yarsinia interocol interocolitica actually yarsinia has the two species yarsinia pestis and yarsinia interocolitica and yarsinia pestis is responsible for the plague the bubonic plague and pneumonic plague you can say they are the very deadly stages that has that outbreak occurs previously in the past and has wiped out a lot of population from the world that is very dangerous and that is actually a bioterrorism we will go to the kaplan book it is not mentioned in the step one we will go to the kaplan book and then revise it okay talking about the yarsinia interolytica it is a gram negative pleuroformic rod or cocobacilli usually transmitted from pet feces so it is the mode of transmission the mode of uh, contact we get infected when we get exposed to this pet feces example cat dogs or a contaminated milk or pork so these are the source of infection can cause acute bloody diarrhea pseudo and pseudo appendicitis that is it can cause since it is enterolytica it will cause the intestinal infection and cause your bloody diarrhea then oh, there is another disease that resemble the appendicitis called pseudo appendicitis and that is due to the right lower abdominal pain due to mesenteric adenitis and out terminal ileitis so the problem is that when you develop this uh, infection there will be the mesenteric lymph node in the inflammation so the mesenteric adenitis will be there and even terminal ileus will be infected since since we are talking about this enterolytica inflammation or say infection of your gastrointestinal tract since it is the right iliac fossa, these two mesenteric adenitis or say terminal ileus causing terminal ileitis, they will resemble they will the pain will resemble that similar to that of the your acute appendicitis. And you need to differentiate that. Because acute appendicitis is, is a acute emergency, surgical emergency. We need to go for the OT. But if it is due to Yarsinia Yarsinia enterocolitica, then it is just antibiotic that's you need our symptomatic treatment you don't need to go for your surgery because it is not the appendix it is the other part that is a mesenteric lymph node as well as terminal ileus there will be a in some patient develop this reactive arthritis as well okay so <clears throat> let's move you to our this kaplan book where we can see this uh, Yarsinia. So Yarsinia has two species, Yarsinia pestis and Yarsinia enterolytica. Yarsinia pestis is a small gram negative rods with bipolar staining. Facultative intracellular parasite. They lives they, they can live inside and outside as well. They have a special properties called coagulase positive. So normally you have heard that only Staphylococcus aureus is coagulase positive, but this bug is also coagulase positive. But since this is the hazardous, hazardous bug, it is very difficult or very risky to deal with this bug in lab or any part of the world. Okay. So reservoir, they will they are a zoonosis. Zoonosis means any infection that is related to the wild animal. Okay. U U.S. desert southwest rodent, example parine dogs, chimpings, squirrels, potential a bio biowarfare agent. So these can these are the actually reservoir in some of the rodents like PIRA dogs or say chimpunks or say squirrels they are with they resolve this bacteria but they will not uh, get killed by the those bacteria they doesn't cause disease to themselves but if they transmit to the human then there will be an outbreak potential bio bio warfare agent transmissions wild rodent flea bite the slavic plague human to human transmission by respiratory dro droplets so what, what happened transmission occur when wild rodents flea bite so we need to get bite from the flea that is responsible mainly the wild rodent rodent and that get this uh, this flea get in bacteria from this barrier dogs or case chimpanzees or squirrel from other source and then if they infect or bite us one human get infected from like rodent flea bite and then uh, due to lead to slavitic plague and from once one human get infected they will infect from one to another and another and another and this way an outbreak can occur so there is a respiratory droplet transmission between humans and humans but for suppose in a community there is no this plague bacteria then it will come from the bite of a plague this is a flea bite that you have to understand 
Pathogenesis, it is a cogulase contaminated mouth part of the flea. Since it's a gram negative, it has endotoxin as well as it has exo exotoxin activity as well. It has enveloped antigen F1 that inhibits the phagocytosis and it has another special system called a type 3 secretion system, suppress cytokine production and resist it, resist the phag phagocytic killing. Actually, type 3 system is uh, present in many organisms that can uh, transfer from one cell to another cell by by putting, by um, moving uh, without coming out of from the cell. So this is a type 3 secretion system and that is actually present in many bacteria. When you talk about this Yersinia pestis, patient with a high fever, there will be the buboes, there will be the conjunctivitis and the patient will develop pneumonia. Exposure to the small rodent, desert southward, this is the responsible for bioterrorism. Let's move on how this disease developed. There are the two forms of disease, one is the bubonic plague and one is the uh, pneumonic plague. Bubonic plague means there is the inflammation of your lymph node. So flea bites infect animal and then later to the human being that is uninfected human being then they, they will get infection after bite symptom develop rapid increasing fever with regional buboes conjunctivitis so what I, what happened paper patient person will develop there will be increasing fever with regional buboes regional buboes means there is the inflammation of your lymph node that leaks that bulges out and like, looks like a this will be a uh, mm, they can be brushed actually. So they, this is the enlargement of the lymph node that you have to understand. There will be the conjunctivitis. So if you are talking about the this, this will develop the conjunctivitis. If untreated, leads to septicemia and death. So that is important. Bubonic plates means they are talking about the inflammation and enlargement of your lymph node. So there will be a flea bite will bite there will be the infl inflammation of your regional lymph node so for here then there will be the uh, axillary lymph node will be uh, enlarged there will formation of the there is due to inflammation and enlargement it look like a bubo so there will be a this therefore it is known as the bubonic plague regional bubos there will develop conjunctivitis if we do not treat it then they will lead to the septicemia and death another complication is that if this regional bubo get dislodged into the lung then develop pneumonic plague Another way pneumonic plague is developed arise from pneumonic plague is arise from this is inflection of your lung obviously arise from the septic pulmonary emboli in a bubonic plague or direct inhalation of the organism from infective individual. So either in the same person the flea has bite it develops the bubonic plague and then uh, this microorganism has transferred to the lungs and cause the this pneumonic plague or a person has got infected to this first one in subsource index case which is called first case get infected and from there it can transmit to the other person from respiratory droplets from that also from one to another another to another and from one person if transmitted through a respiratory drop respiratory droplets then it will develop this pneumonic plague highly contagious bioterrorism the patient will develop symptoms like hemoptysis chest pain and dyspnea Diagnosis, clinical specimen and culture are hazardous. Sero diagnosis, the blood can be, we cannot culture this organism because it will lead to a huge outbreak and every, every live staff and then their families and community and country all will go. So we rarely culture this organism. It is very hazardous. Sero diagnosis or direct immunofluorosis can be done. Septipine staining on the blood stain, right or western stain, you can see bipolar stain or called septipine, septipine stain. The treatment is amino glycoside. Prevention, animal control and avoidance of the sick and dead animals, there is the kill vaccine for military people only. So thing is that this is the very dangerous disease that should cause the plague and plague uh, we can let me talk see show you. So the plague is actually if you see uh, what is okay. So what is plague? Plague is a contagious bacterial disease characterized by the fever and delirium, typically with the formation of the buboes, bubonic plague, and sometimes infection of the lung. Any contagious that spread rapidly and kill many people. So this was actually, let me uh, show you, the, um, you can see this. In the late Middle Ages, Europe experienced the deadliest disease outbreak in the history when the Black Death. It is also called the Black Death. The famous pandemic of the bubonic plague and kills many, many people, you can say. So there was in the late Middle Ages, Europe, that was uh, many people was wiped out due to this infection. And this is also called the Black Death. In the early days to get prevented from respiratory infection, this type of picture were been, this type of marks were used, been used. They try to uh, prevent, they try to make a social distancing and they try to uh, 
prevent the direct exposure of the droplet contacts to the people so they, they cannot get inf infected from infected people so that was the ways where people have used and now we are using a lot of marks like surgical masks and n95 k and n95 then and the other respirators we are have a lot of protection now these days but in early days you can see people have invented some of the ways to get prevent themselves from getting infected from this bubonic plague so talking about the plague the actually plague is caused by a bacteria usually found in the small mammals and their fleas so you can see their flea they can most common type of plagues affect the lymph node it can be severe but there is no human to human transmission in case of the bubonic plague but when it goes to the lung then it can actually get to become transmission the deadliest and rapid form of plague occurs when it reaches to the lung it can transmit it person to person via droplet in the air people infected with the plague usually develop flu like syndrome with once in seven days early diagnosis and treatment are essential the fatality rate is 30 to 100 percent if left untreated so you can easily see seen this is the flea bite mediated disease that one person need to be get infected if it is in only a bubonic plague then it is not going to transmit or doesn't count any outbreak but if it goes to the lung and develop pneumonic plague then there will be the devastating complication that you have to understand so hope you understand the gravity of this bacteria causing the outbreak in this you have seen this coronavirus outbreak and Laura we have suffered the whole world has suffered a lot if this plague which is called a black death outbreak occurs that is really a concern since and at present days there is no outbreak presenting anywhere up in the world so they have not mentioned in the first aid but you have to understand this is important topic now coming to the we have talked about this uh, yersinia pestis yersinia intercolitica we have talked in the uh, first aid feature where they have the distinguished feature they are motile at 25 degrees celsius means below temperature room temperature but at body temperature at 37 degree they become non motile so that is one of the important feature they can grow in the cold growth cold enrichment cold environment they can grow easily they also are the zoonotic animal zoonotic means they are related to the wild animals transmission occur through the unpasteurized milk pork prominent in the northern climate like michigan and sandin vienna the pathogenesis are introtoxin and endotoxin multiplies in the cold you can see the vignette patient with inflammatory diarrhea or pseudo appendicitis cold climate unpasteurized milk or pork these are the gram negative non lactose fermenting non s 2 s producing organism so if you remember our um, division of your gram negative tree then we have talked about this yersinia intercolitica where they were true bacilli that was con differentiated between uh, lactose non fermenter and fermenter in lactose non fermenter there was oxidase positive which are pseudomonas then oxidase negative were salmonella sigella yersinia pestis yersinia and uh, this were the organism proteus and among that also we have divided sigella and yersinia as a s 2 s negative where salmonella and proteus as s 2 s produce positive so these are s 2 s negative like non lactose fermenting gram negative bacilli moving further the disease it will cause enterocolitis present many vary with the years young very young febrile diarrhea will be there older kids young adults they may develop pseudo appendicitis also called the yersinia tuberculosis pseudo tuberculosis adult will develop enterocolitis with post infectic sequelae like reactive arthritis so it depends on the which age group has been infected if it is a very young they will develop the diarrhea that is a febrile diarrhea and maybe that could be a bloody one if he goes to the older one young adults they, which has appendicitis also common they will develop the feature of pseudo appendicitis, appendicitis due to inflammation of the terminal ileus or mesenteric lymph node and they are actually present in the right iliac fossa so they may resemble pseudo appendicitis you have to rule out because in that case in, in case of appendicitis it is an acute emergency surgery is required but if it is due not due to the appendix inflammation it is due to the this intero yersinia intercoral yersinia intro enterocolitica infection then we need to just treat and medically and observe in adult they may lead to the uh, enterocolitis with post infective sequelae like reactive arthritis blood transfusion associated infection has been seen diagnosis is very easy since it is not hazardous you can stool culture easily at a low temperature 25 degrees cold enrichment they can easily be grown treatment is supportive care fluoroquinolol or third generation cephalosporin for the immunocompromised in this way we have concluded our this Yersinia pestis and Yersinia intercolitica. Yersinia intercolitica has three different type of disease and three different age group. 
okay but when you talk about the Yersinia pestis it is a dis disease of very great concern that causes bioterrorism that is the bio biological warfare agent and that may lead to the outbreak if it is not been controlled properly thank you